Hi, I'm Tommy Piegler, forestry instructor at Coastal Pines Technical College in Waycross. We're here on the campus today of our Waycross campus and we're looking at some dendro. I'm going to be doing some inspections of our trees and plants behind me, talking about some unique features about them and identifying the common names for these trees, shrubs, and plants. All right, let's look at some trees and plants that we have right here. The first one I want to look at is the muscadine or grapevine. Notice that it's already starting to turn colors a little bit. We're late August and we got a pot of grapes right here on it. Notice the leaf of it. This is very unique for the muscadine or grapevine. Here's some more with some grapes on it and on up here. It's a woody vine. A lot of times they'll get tangled up in some other material. And right now it's getting tangled up with a Chinese privet that's right here. So this is a muscadine. Also right here in the area, we see water oak. And this water oak right here, getting tangled up a little bit with the grapevine. One thing about this water oak you'll notice is it's got bell-shaped leaves. And also notice the acorns. Water oak is a red oak in the red oak family. Notice the acorns on this water oak. Also in the area, we have a Chinese privet. Notice the leaf arrangement of the Chinese privet. Opposite leaf arrangement. It's got small leaves. At the end of the at the end of the privet, you almost have a it almost makes like a snake's tongue Y on the end of the privet. So we have Chinese privet right here. Also in the area, we have Eastern Red Cedar right here. This is Eastern Red Cedar. Sometimes it's often called a South Georgia Christmas tree. So this is our Eastern Red Cedar right here. This is some more muscadine. Maybe some more muscadine or grapevine. You may even see some grapes in here. Um, here we have Japanese honeysuckle. Another woody vine. It's not quite as thick as the muscadine. Opposite leaf arrangement. This is Japanese honeysuckle. Coming along here. We have some more water oak. It has a bell-shaped leaf on it. Behind the water oak in here, we have some more eastern red cedar. Notice the blackberry. This is common blackberry, often found in this area. It's already had blackberries on it in the late spring, so we're in the fall of the year now, but this is common blackberry. We have here Carolina laurel cherry. One thing unique about Carolina laurel cherry is it's got a shiny, glossy leaf. It also has, it also has on some of the leaves, dentate teeth. So this leaf margin is smooth and so is this one. So I don't see any of these leaves here that have dentate teeth. But some of the leaves will often have dentate teeth. This one here, this leaf has a dentate tooth on it right here. So this is a Carolina laurel cherry. It's a glossy leaf. Also has a sweet smell. Carolina laurel cherry has a sweet smell to it. So if you want to distinguish this from others, you not only need to look at the glossy leaves and look for dentate teeth, but you also need to smell and see if it has a sweet smell. Carolina laurel cherry. As we walk along here, we have some water oak here in, in the bottom. We have a china berry tree. And this china berry tree is quite big. China berry is another um, invasive species. Um, notice the uh, compound leaf on the china berry is quite unique. Um, we see chinaberry growing along fence rows, a lot around the edges of fields. 
So this is China Berry. We also have a black cherry. So this is a cousin to the Carolina Laurel cherry. We had the Carolina Laurel cherry back here. This is the black cherry. Notice it's not as glossy as the dark color as the Carolina Laurel cherry. It's a lighter color. Um, it has serrated leaves. So the big difference between the Carolina Laurel cherry and the black cherry is Carolina Laurel Cherry has a darker, glossy, shiny leaf. This has a more dull, lighter green leaf. And this has serrated margins. So the outer margin of this black cherry is serrated. That means it's got little, little serrations around it. Also, the black cherry has a pungent smell or a rank smell. It doesn't have the sweet smell that the Carolina Laurel Cherry does. Also in the area, we have camphor. Camphor. Camphor has a green stem. It has a medicine-y smell that's only unique to camphor. But really the green stem is what gives it away. Also in the area, growing into camphor, we have Virginia creeper. People often get Virginia creeper confused with poison ivy. Poison ivy, poison ivy will have three leaves. So the saying is, if it has three leaves, let it be. This, notice this has five leaflets per leaf five leaflets okay this is virginia creeper so woody vine much like uh muscadine much like uh japanese honeysuckle but it's unique and it's got five leaflets i'm standing here in the campus of coastal pines and waycross standing next to a pecan tree some people call it pecan we call it pecan around here Notice the, the pecan leaf, or leaflet, the compound leaf, and it's got, the leaf arrangement would be termed opposite leaf arrangement. If you notice the leaf arrangement on this, leaf arrangement is coming out across from each other. So this is a pecan tree. Here we have red mulberry. Notice with red mulberry the leaf is, is a glossy leaf but it feels almost sandpapery to the field. It has large leaves on this one but it also it can have smaller leaves on it. Sometimes the leaf will have uh, deeper lobes and they'll be deeper shaped as well. So this is called a red mulberry and it'll have different shaped leaves and oftentimes it'll have lobes. This is a red mulberry leaf and look how large that leaf is right there. Here we have yopon. Yopon is a type of holly. And oftentimes, yopon can be uh, mistaken for Chinese privet. But one of the things about yopon is it is uh, as opposite, or excuse me, alternate leaf arrangement. So Chinese privet has opposite leaf arrangement. Yopon has alternate leaf arrangement. Looks very much like Chinese privet. You would need to look at the leaf arrangement as being alternate as compared to the opposite for Chinese privet. Here we have wax myrtle. Wax myrtle is often called southern bayberry. Uh, wax myrtle is common around our flatwoods in South Georgia. One thing unique about wax myrtle is the smell of the, the pungent smell of the leaves. Very strong pungent smell has a light colored leaf. Um, it 
but also when you crush the leaves up, if you don't have any insect repellent around, you could actually use the wax myrtle leaves to uh, rub around your neck or on your arms. It'll keep the mosquitoes away. So that's one thing neat about the wax myrtle. Here we have Chinese tallow tree. Chinese tallow tree, often called popcorn tree. It has a leaf, like a teardrop leaf. The leaf is like a, is like a teardrop. It'll often have green pods or green fruit on it that in the fall basically explodes. The fruit explodes and it looks like popcorn. This is called a Chinese tallow tree, often called a popcorn tree. Often we have other plants in here. This is again, is muscadine. We have one here called greenbrier. This is a, a vine that grows. It has thorns on it. It's a woody vine with thorns. It's the only woody vine with thorns that we have. This is called greenbrier. Sometimes it can get very big. A lot of times people call it wait a minute vine. But this is called greenbrier. So I'm coming in here and I'm looking for some pine. And I actually see, I see two species of pine. I'm seeing the slash pine and the loblolly pine. The slash pine has two needles per fascicle. The loblolly pine has three needles per fascicle. So I'm gonna come up in here and pull some needles from this tree. Let's see. All right, so I've been back there and pull some needles. Notice they're not very long slash would be a little longer this is loblolly notice three needles per fascicle three 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 okay. so this is loblolly pine our slash pine like i said will have two needles per fascicle i'm gonna go in here and i'm gonna pull out some more i think i see a red maple in here Notice the red maple has that maple leaf look, but look at the red petiole. Notice the petiole here is red. Also the stem as you get closer to the end gets, gets more red, more distinct red. And again the red petiole and the maple leaf. I was walking along here and I noticed that this is unique right here. This is persimmon. And one of the things about persimmon is the leaves will look like pepper. They'll look like they, they've got pepper. This is really young, so you don't really see it as much on this. But let me pull down. This is the this is the mama tree here. As I pull down this one. Notice what I'm talking about, about the pepper. See how the leaves, and it's not only on the front side, it's also on the back side, okay? The leaf looks a little like, a little like a Chinese tallow tree, but not quite as distinct. But the pepper marks give it away. So this is a persimmon. We've actually already found a Chinese tallow tree. And remember we, just saw a persimmon. Notice how the leaves are similar with the persimmon and the Chinese tallow tree, but there's no pepper spots on this Chinese tallow tree. But look at the fruit, look at the droop here. Now we're in late August, so sometime late September on into uh, first of October, this will actually explode. It'll, it'll 
open up and this will look like popcorn. And that's where it gets its name, popcorn tree. This is a Chinese tallow tree. I was walking along here and I noticed one that I hadn't seen yet. And uh, this is called sumac. This is not poison sumac, this is wing sumac. What is unique about wing sumac? I can get loose with these briars here. What's unique about wing sumac is it actually does have wings on the stem. Notice the leaf arrangement is opposite, but it has wings. This is wing sumac. Thankfully, it's not poison sumac or I wouldn't be handling it. We were talking earlier about the difference between loblolly and slash with loblolly having three needles in a fascicle and the slash having two needles. We don't have any long leaf today, but long leaf has three needles in the fascicle as well. This is a wax myrtle, but this is what I want to show you right here. This is the this is a slash pine. And what I want to pull here is I want to pull I want to pull some of these some of these needles loose and I want to show you. In the fascicle, okay, or the sheath right there, we have two two leaflets, two needles for slash. Notice I pulled some dead needles, that's two as well. That's two. That's two. That's two. That's two. So pulling twos. So we have a slash pine here. It's a little darker green. The hue is a little darker green than the loblolly, but really the main way, look at the length of the needles and the fact that there's two per fascicle is your slash pine. 